What is going on guys? So are you? Welcome back to the channel. My name is George and in today's video we're going to do a comparison between the Heimdallr SKX 007 homage versus the new Heimdallr SKX monster mod uh, homage. Now just to put things in perspective, not too long ago I did a review of the watch on my left which is the older version of the uh, SKX homage, the 2K19 and I'll put a uh, link if you want to check that video up somewhere in the uh, corner there where I did say that this particular one would be uh, compatible with Seiko SKX aftermarket parts. Now Heimdallr reached out and said, look, that is not true. I do apologize for that. And that watch is not compatible. We do have a version which is a newer version of the uh, SKX, the monster mod that I have on my right here. So this is the 2K20. Now that would be uh, compatible with Seiko SKX aftermarket parts. Would you be interested in having a look? And I said, yes. And they sent this watch over uh, for a comparison. So what we're gonna do in today's video, guys, we're just gonna have a look at the more visual differences between the two watches. So again, the watch on my left is the older version and the watch on my right is the newer version. So we're just gonna start with the obvious difference, which is the dial. So the watch on my left features the Seiko SKX 007 dial, SKX hands, SKX markers. At the 12 o'clock position, you have the Sharky logo, and at the 6 o'clock position, you have automatic divers with 200 meter in red. And at the 3 o'clock position, you have the uh, day and date with no date frame around it. Now, both watches feature the um, NH36 movement. So the watch on my right is the Monster Mod, and this one has uh, Seiko Monster Hands, Monster Indices, and at the uh, 12 o'clock position, again, you have the Sharky logo applied in silver. At the 6 o'clock position, you have automatic divers, 200 meter with no, um, no red writing, and at the 3 o'clock position, you have the uh, day and date uh, cutout, again, with, uh, with a day date frame around it this time. The second difference between the two watches is the bezel. So I'm just going to turn this so you have it nicely centered. And at the same time, you can hear the bezel action. So the watch on my left, the older version, as you can see here, if you have a closer look, the hand, the writing on the actual bezel is slightly bigger on the watch on my left. And I'm just going to go through the... Um, bezel action as well in a couple of seconds for you guys to have a look and also the pip at the 12 o'clock position on the watch on my left is slightly bigger than the watch on my right than the newer version and the bezel action so the older version in my opinion has a smoother more consistent sounding bezel again really solid no back play and both watches feature a uh, sapphire uh, sapphire a ceramic insert my apologies and I'm just going to go through the um, bezel action on the watch on the left, which is the newer version. And as you can see here, this is slightly harder to turn. Again, sounds a bit hollower, but still consistent with no backplay whatsoever. Really, really solid. And again, like I said, this one also features a uh, ceramic insert. And the writing, like I mentioned on the watch on my right, are, is slightly smaller. Not a problem there, but still. The third difference between the that I could notice between the two watches is the finishing on the case so if you have followed if you have if you've seen my previous video I did mention that this one has uh, slightly sharper edges and as you can see here Heimdallr listened and the edges on the one on the right here are slight are not as sharp so it's better better finishing around it I apologize there's a lot of uh, fingerprints on the watch and as you can see here um, one of the biggest one was the uh, difference on the uh, lugs so the watch on my left the uh, finishing on the lugs is slight it's a bit boxier not as sharp but um, they did rectify it so in the newer version as you can see you won't see the the same kind of uh, uh, sharp angles on the crown guards they did actually listen so both watches feature the the same finishing on the case so polished on the top of the lugs and uh, uh, brushed on the top of the lugs, my apologies, and polished on the side of the case and uh, on both sides of the case and on the uh, crown guards. So still, they did actually listen and they made the entire watch, the newer version, I'm just going to put that down for a second, they made it a bit more, um, a bit more friendly and it's not as uh, sharp around all the angles and all, all the edges. So they did a very, very good job there. So the fourth difference is on the case back. On the older version of the watch, 
you have a screw down case back and you have in the center of the case back you have uh, the Heimdaller Sharky logo engraved and you have this quote to strive to seek to find and not to yield custom made and on the newer version of the watch on the case back you also have um, screw down case back but the Sharky logo also uh, engraved in the middle is slightly raised as you can see I'm just going to do that for you guys to have a look at the uh, texture also again in a texture kind of um, finish and you don't have the same quote in this kind of uh, circle here circle here you have water resistant 200 meter sapphire crystal automatic movement all stainless steel and another difference which i can notice the fifth one is the uh, sapphire crystal so the older version has a uh, air coating and you can see here uh, as the light hits it this kind of bluish slightly purplish um tint as I kind of angle it around but the watch on my right doesn't have that and I actually cannot see the kind of the same kind of uh, uh, tint that I was mentioning as you can see here as the light hits it because kind of, it becomes super super uh, glary it's not a bad thing it's still super super legible in uh, in the life but just wanted to point that out uh, both watches feature a flat sapphire crystal and on the last difference and this is more keeping in uh, Seiko traditional style is the aligning in the chapter ring so the older version as you can see here the chapter ring aligns with the markers and also almost perfectly with the uh the bezel just going to do that for you guys to have a proper look there sorry again a lot of fingerprints and on the all newer version you have the chapter ring that doesn't align with the marker at the 12 o'clock position as you can see here it's slightly uh, to the right, but it does it does align properly with the bezel. I don't mind. It's actually very very cool, and both watches are actually super super awesome. I actually think that this one uh, wears slightly smaller. I don't know every time I look at it, and uh, maybe because the um, the dial or the bezel, I'm not entirely sure. Considering the fact that they're very very similar watches, but like I said, this one on the right is compatible with uh, Seiko aftermarket parts. So that's pretty much it. These were kind of uh, the differences. Um, the Jubilee is pretty much the same. And I just opted for that. Not that it is about the uh, the Jubilee bracelet. It was more about the case. But I just wanted to give for you guys to have a proper look at it. Just to get a uh, better feel for the comparison. And both cases are 42 millimeters in diameter. I forgot to mention that as well. But still, uh, they're both super, super awesome watches. And I actually kind of like both of them equally. This one uh, is just... Every time I feel like wearing an SKX, I kind of go for this one. But every time I feel like uh, wearing something a bit more aggressive, aggressive considering the, that dial, I go for uh, this particular watch. So that was it, guys. Those are my uh, five, six, actually, differences between the um, old 2K19 versus new 2K20 watches from uh, Heimdaller. Uh, I'll put all the... Um, I'll put the uh, link to the uh, Heimdaller website on in the description box below. And uh, if you guys, let me know in the comment section below if you have either of these watches. I think this one at the moment is discontinued, but it's going to come back. But this one, you can still find it on the on the website. And like I said, let me know in the comment section below if you had either of these watches and uh, what do you think of them. Uh, these were my differences. Thank you very much for watching and for sticking around and uh, listening to me talk about watches. And again, a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't so far. I thank you very much again, and I will see you guys in the next video. And also, be safe, and I'll talk to you. See ya!